Welcome, everybody, once again to Arizona Real Estate News, and Ruby is in timeout again. Uh, you've got the writer strike in Southern California, and she's on some kind of strike um, today. I don't know uh, um, what it is. She's not a writer or a producer, but we still have Pat with my rate, McMaster, and Jackie with Century 21 Arizona Foothills. Greetings, everybody. How are you doing? How are you doing? Oh, man, I'm, I'm getting ready for my trip, so I've got... Uh, clothes laid out and, and and we're still going to do the show so i'll be on live monday morning i don't think i'll be on live tuesday morning but uh <clears throat> we'll keep going i think when we do this show the next time we do this thursday show i will be at the nevada idaho border i think is the way oh, it's looking wow. for us so you leave so. on the ninth right I leave on the morning of the night. Yep. So I'm just, I'm gingerly walking my way up there. So how fun. Getting that done. And did a uh, crunch all the numbers for the class reunion this morning. So we're on track, but enough about that. Let's talk about sales today. Cause it's interesting. You know, I tracked a seven day moving average here and I pull it right off the MLS. I'm doing it for a long time and it kind of took a turn down the past couple days mm. um, and then new listings went up. So new listings went up about 200 and sales went down about 200, but you can still see though that it's considerably higher than what it has been, you know, that red line there. Um, but so I'm a little curious if that dip we're seeing is um, just a temporary little quirky thing, or if it's, just the beginning of a little slow word um, dip in sales as we get closer to summer. You think it could have anything to do with the warming up suddenly? I think, well, rates, you know, took a bit of a spike up on Monday and that could That's have true. had something to do with it, but it's just, uh, it's like anything else where you just kind of follow it. And we've got, <clears throat> I'm seeing that here. This is listing under contract here. You can see how well it's come up since, you know, the first part of January, first part of the year. And if I compare it to 2019, which everybody likes to follow pre, you know, pre pandemic numbers, that's the green one here. Um, <clears throat> we're still below that by about 3000 a week. So um, our, <clears throat> when you, when you hear numbers that say that our sales are down, they are down. Um, but they're really down from a hectic number that we saw in 2020 and 2022. So I don't even like to like to count that. But um, so, Rick, can I ask you another question? Could that sure. have anything? And I just noticed with the clients that I'm working with is that there are so the choices are dropping every week. And I I've got clients that are very frustrated because literally they're like, nothing's coming through. Is my email working? I'm not getting listings. And I'm like, yes, your yeah, email is yeah. coming, but I, I wonder if that has anything to do with it. I think so. I think there's a little bit of buyer fatigue in that they're not finding what they're looking for, but then, uh, the, but we kind of got that little glimmer of hope, you know, today looking at the numbers that they went up by 300. So maybe um, the sales went up by 300 today, the, uh, the listings, new listings. Oh, the listings. Yeah. But when we look at the Maricopa County affidavits, closings are down 34% from last year. This is in April and down 13% from March of 2023. So uh, the sales price was down 5.1 from a year ago, but up 1.8% from last month. So um, new home sales, they're the bell of the ball though. Um, new home sales count was up 10.3% from April of last year but down 16.2% from March. So they were down month over month, but up pretty good for the year. So, you know, new construction is, is doing fairly well. And then we just take a look at one last thing here. And I had stuck my neck out a couple of weeks ago and said that as listings decline and sales start to increase, and they don't have to increase by much, that we will see a reduction in seller closing costs concessions. And look at this. We went from 46% to 38% in what's this one week, one, one month so far, 30, 38%. So we dropped by almost 10% in seller concessions. So um, I think that trend is as long as that gap between sales and new listings continues to, to narrow that we're probably going to see 
fewer and fewer seller concessions because they used to have to do that as bait, you know, get in here. I'm going to buy down your rate. Let's go. And, and now that it's easier to sell the home, they don't have to do that. So that's going to be an interesting one to watch. But Pat, uh, today was a typical day where everybody sits and waits for the Fed to say yet again that they're going up 25 basis points. And yet again, it was just kind of a snoozer, right? Yeah, pretty much was. I mean, um, you know, it really, no, I would say a snoozer. It was just a, it was a good solid day in the bond market. I mean, it was, the five and a half coupon was up 27 basis points. We saw it open up. This number was up plus 40, which was, a, you know, that's a good, that's a good day. Um, you know, if you had like a $400,000 bond, I mean, a mortgage, I mean, obviously you could change your closing costs by a thousand, fifteen hundred, you know, 40, 40 basis points, not dollar for dollar, but typically, you know, it can kind of roll that way depending on it. But, you know, the 10-year treasury is down to 336. So we're seeing this trend just, you know, obviously since March, um, you know, you got these resistance. This is These are rates, actually. So you got these ceilings of resistance, obviously. We broke through here. You saw it up, bro, up, and then we saw this right here, this floor. It broke, and then see this floor, how it just broke and just went below it, and then it hit, hit this floor. So there's different floors, as you can kind of see on the resistance. The 50 day, the 25 day moving average, the 50 day, the 100 day, the 200 day. And anytime you can, you know, break through a, a 50, 100, or even the strongest, the strongest one is a 200 day moving average. But I mean, we broke through here at 343. So that, that was a good sign for everything. Um, you know, that Fed basically bumped it up 25 bips. They said they're, you know, who knows? Everybody can read the tea leaves and Powell. I mean, um, as far as what he's looking to do down the road, but. You know, consensus is that, you know, maybe another quarter or pause. But, you know, the jobs report came out and there was interesting that Barry had said that according to the jobs report, that there was 296,000 job creations in April, which was twice as strong as the 150,000 expected. So, but the market kind of read through that because uh, they changed their, their methodology and had they not, had they, they changed their methodology and uh, they smooth based on what he said, smoothing this out, we would have seen a year to date monthly job gain of two hundred five thousand versus three hundred six thousand in two thousand twenty two. So it's obvious an obvious slowdown. He said we got the BLS jobs report coming on Friday. So um, you know things are looking good on the bond market as far as rates uh, quieting down, or you know we didn't have too much of a of a you know fireworks today. It was kind of a he he made a he made a short comment that kind of mirrored what Janet Yellen was saying when he was asked a question about the the banking system, and he basically said, you know, well, they're yeah, that's trouble. Uh, we think that's the end of it, but they've um, that's creating more tightening in the right. banking system, so they're kind of doing part of our job mm. for us. So he was really signaling that that they're probably done. That yeah. you know, that yeah. the credit, the whole, the whole reason that he rate, he said he raises rates is to tighten availability of credit, and here come these bank collapses, kind of doing that for him. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think he's between a rock and a hard place. I don't think he can raise rates again because he's just going to create more chaos in these these small regional banks. And it's got, I mean, we're in a really weird time right now. And I, I it looks to me based on what you just showed me in the charts and what we're seeing that I don't see any, any uh, headwind that's going to make rates go up. No, I think, you know, I, I, I listened to his uh, testimony and based on, you know, I don't, I personally don't trust Yellen. Paul is, seems like he's trying to buck the line, you know, uh, in terms of not listening, you know, he's just doing, trying to do his own thing. But, you know, if Yellen, I don't trust anything that comes out of her mouth she, saying the banks are, you know, are, were, they're healthy. I mean, you saw three instances yeah, here recently. Have any credibility with me either. I really don't. I mean, you know, I, I mean, the bank, I, I, Peter Schiff from uh, Europe Pacific was on, you know, this business news market. And he's like, you know, there's, there are several analysts on there saying there's still trouble with these banks. These regional banks are, um, Basically, there's still trouble on the horizon. If I hear what you're saying, you're saying that these banks have all this cheap paper out there, and with the rates going up, it really eroded their margins, right? Yeah, it eroded their eroded their asset base. So, um, 
you know, I just, I really, they load up on these treasuries over the last year, year and a half, you know, they invested in this stuff. Um, and I, I, I really believe that there's more, there's more rats in the rat hole. Um, and I think yeah, that the, comment was, the feds are stuck in a, yeah, not to interrupt you, but there was a comment that I heard today on the radio. I was driving around and said that, that, you know, the, the most of the central bankers think that um, this is going to be we're headed to a rough road and Powell's convinced he's going to pull off the soft landing like like he's trying to do. And they also kind of beat him up and said, why doesn't he do what Volcker and Greenspan do and look Congress in the eye and say, stop spending money. You guys are the yeah. reason we have this inflation. And they, they're, Peter, they're puzzled. Why won't you say that? And he's like, well, Peter that's Schiff, not my lane. Yeah, Peter Schiff called it up. He, he goes, he said what we've been saying the last several months of the fiscal and the monetary policy are totally dis disjointed. And um, Peter Schiff called it. He's like, you know, these quarter point bumps aren't helping when the fact that the Fed or the, uh, the Congress is spending trillions and trillions of dollars. That's an inflationary, that's another side of it that they're, so they're kind of bump, bump up Just, these quarter points. So, so Jackie, let me ask you a question out in the market out there. Because you know? we talked a little bit about buyers, uh, uh, you know, last week too, and that buyers were kind of, you know, 60 days behind. Do you find that um, buyers originally in February were like, man, I want a deal. I'm not mm -hmm. writing an offer unless I'm getting really, is that, easing off a little bit or is it still kind of there maybe a tad i in fact i had a call today i think i was telling you that about the show before the show um you know she was thinking that the market was back october november but i am getting especially it's like there's two categories the older clientele they seem to be right with it. They know exactly what's going on. They're watching the markets and probably because they're vested so heavily. And then there's the younger professionals that seem to be kind of with it and they know what's going on. And then there's a group in between that seem to be almost, I hate to say oblivious, but oblivious to, you know, that we've moved back into a seller's market. So it's, you know, it just kind of depends. I mean, I'm seeing, I, I am seeing people catch up a little bit more, but then you have stuff come out on the news that's, it, it doesn't tell the whole story. You know, the headlines, again, we're still, you know, to have that issue. I mean, I saw one today, a YouTuber where he's talking about Arizona listings are surging. And, you know, we're up 23% over last year. Yeah, you know, we're up over 23, 22% Arizona as a whole, Arizona. But Phoenix, it's just, there's so much misinformation out there still. And yeah, I think I watched that as well. I watched it as well, and the, the narrative didn't quite match the headline. The headline was somewhere along, along the line that listings are spiking. But, you know, I mean, it, it is what it is. I mean, yeah. I, I can't predict the market. I mean, to me this market is so disjointed it could go either way but i don't see um any numbers yet that are telling me that, that we're about to hit a sticky situation no. um you know when we say that we get accused oh you agents are always trying to push the market and you want i'm just here's what i'm looking at and i i ran some numbers from uh last night show that said here's what you need to look at you know if if listings are going down um prices are not going to go down it's nice. just not, especially if, you know, if the, the sales levels remain maintained the same. And, and so um, listings can go up for a lot of different reasons. Listings don't go up now. We've learned when rates go up, they did temporarily because when rates went up so fast, people panicked and put their house on the market. Right now we've already had rates bump up against seven again, right? Past couple of weeks. But we not so quickly. We, right, but we didn't see any new listings show up. So equating a rate increase with new listings is, I think, a disconnect. And I think it was a temporary thing that we saw. But yeah, every agree. metric that we're looking at says, well, um, it looks like we're going to have a little bit of upward pricing pressure. But now I just showed on the seven-day moving average a slight turn downward. So, you know, as we go into summer, it's going to be interesting to watch that. But Pat, I think mortgage applications dropped just a little, but they're 
kind of picking up uh, this week, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Picked up. I mean, um, I think they picked up uh, like, oh, uh, like uh, they de so they purchases decreased 2% last week after increasing 4.6% uh, last week after increasing by 46 the week before. So they said they're now higher six out of the last nine weeks. But it says purchases are still down 32% from this time year last year. So, but well, a lot of the things are wait for the recession. The recession's coming. Here it comes. It's going to be bad for housing. Don't you usually see rates go down during a recession and housing doesn't necessarily go down? It's been, it's been, it's been shown many, many recessions that housing actually does well in recessions. So, with the exception of 2008, but that was yeah. caused by housing. Different story, totally different yeah. story. I am seeing more confidence. I'm hearing more confidence from buyers and sellers. And I am getting some more people reaching out, contemplating listing now. And I've had a few that have actually said, if if we get to high five, six, I'm thinking about selling my house and cashing out the equity. So interest you know, rates wise? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that the biggest uh you know, people can look for values of, to fluctuate. I mean, the demand is there, tight supply. I think the big impetus is going to be uh, if rates do get, you know, if we do see a banking kind of crisis and the, the feds realize that they're going to have to start maybe moving rates down. Um, I think that that's going to be the biggest push toward people, you know, listing their house. If they can, like I said, trade out a three and a half or 4% mortgage for, say, a, a mortgage that's five or five and a quarter, though, they're going to do it. Yeah. That's going to be the, yeah, I, I think, think that's going to be the yeah. biggest stuff, right? Until then, I think we're just going to muddle. I mean, if, if they, if they stay in this range, um, you know, people are getting used to, you know, six and a half, six and three quarters, low sixes, you know, just depends what kind of loan. But I think the biggest push is going to be rates. If rates do, uh, do fall, that's when you're going to see supply increase. That's my yeah. guess. Well, and I think the rate increases, as far as the, the quickness of up or down has slowed down. I mean, we yeah. see movement, we see it move up and I've had clients at, you know, they'll call in the past, they would call and say, you know, that they had talked to a lender and rates were at six and a half. And I'm like, we're at seven and an eighth right now. And they, people didn't realize how fast it was moving. And I think people are starting to get, they're starting to educate themselves a little bit more. They're feeling more comfortable with it. And we're not having such big, huge swings so fast. And I think that's helping. I think we're going into, a, I think the trend the last, uh, <laughs> since March has been, you know, we saw this trend before that where rates were just, you know, you go back to like October last year, you know, we just saw this pop from October to March, you know, that just was ridiculous. And then, um, you know, we've seen it subsiding. So I think I'm starting to see a trend now that with all the headwinds, I think, ahead of us with the bank. I mean, the bank, I'm banking, I think it's not, we're not, not out of the woods in terms of economy, but I think it's going to give people an opportunity that, um, you know, are smart about it to take advantage of, uh, you know, the, the turmoil. Cause the supplies, the, the supply of homes is not it, like you said, Rick, it's not, it's not going from 12, 13,000 to 57,000 overnight. No, we had, you know, that, that was our extreme high. And then, and, but when you see some of these YouTubers out there that are saying how far up we are, you know, we're up 120% in listings. Good. I wish we were up 500% so we could right. hit some type of normalcy. So we really, uh, I want just, I just want to educate people on where these numbers are in reality. If we remove the, the silly season of 2021 and 2022, I mean, you know, we had 4,800 listings on the market you know, a couple of times. So I would hope we're up at least 120%. It's not, it's not a red flag. It's not an alarming thing. So it's, uh, no. and it doesn't mean the market is getting flooded with listings. It's trying to get up to normal and keeps hitting resistance. That's yeah. the, fact. Well, got, That's the true number right there. People are, you know, you just have to look at it this way. People back in 2008, they were selling because they had to, um, and to, and now Today, they're selling because they want to. Right, right. The yeah, biggest yeah. frustration I hear from people is that there's not enough listings from buyers. And I, yeah. I don't know if I said this before the show or during the show already. And if I said it already, I apologize. But we'll cut that out. Buyer, we'll cut that point <laughs> buyers are actually saying, are my alerts turned on? I'm not getting listings. And I'm like, yeah. I'm, and a couple of times I've actually gone to check 
because they'll go, you know, where typically they were getting listings every day or every couple days. They're going a week sometimes. And I think if we had more listings on the market, we'd have more sales because buyers, yep. buyers are telling me they're frustrated with that. And they're hoping more listings come on the market when school gets out. So some of them are telling me they'll wait till the summertime when more people list their house. If more people list their house. Right. Because now, not only that, if you go outside the real estate world right now, between now and July, there's going to be this huge flood of news over the debate over this silly debt ceiling that the, that they've never followed or adhered to ever. Um, you know, are we going to raise the debt ceiling and what budget are we getting? So it's going to get ugly. The stock market's going to go up. It's going to go down. The banks are going to get nervous. You're going to hear people say, we're going to default. You're not going to get your social security. And then lo and behold, one day they'll go, Hey, we have an agreement. And so, but in the meantime, everything's going to bounce around like a ping pong ball. So I don't know, um, you know, how many people are actually going to list in, in June, because I think there's going to be too much nervousness. People don't like nervousness, so they're gonna they're gonna wait. But just based on the seven day moving average I looked at, maybe they are thinking about listing because we went up by about two or three hundred homes. You can see by the ticker below, you know, we have a difference of three hundred twenty six homes now versus the other day we were in positive territory with contracts over new listings by about ten. So it's a small shift. I don't think it's the canary in the coal mine. But uh, um, it's going to be, you know, I think it I think it illustrates um, why you should really follow the numbers more more closely um, versus, oh, just seeing a headline, um, talking to your neighbor. If you're serious about selling or buying, get get inside these numbers. Go to Realtor.com, go to Redfin, go to Zillow. Um, take a look at the actual inventory versus 2019. 2018 and uh and you know and get well versed in the numbers because somebody is well i hear it's really bad well when you do some digging you're going to find out it it's not that bad <laughs> and this is where we'll get yeah. beat up because we're trying to tell people to, <laughs> to buy so it could go anywhere it really could i mean i i'm you make sense i'm a little nervous about this banking situation i, I all they're doing is they're patching over and moving it from the smaller banks to the big banks. It's still a problem just because you gave it to big brother doesn't mean it went away. And so it yeah. could add turmoil. I don't think it's going to be a banking collapse. I don't think it's going to be a Lehman brothers event, but it's going to be um, anxiety. Would you agree? I definitely don't yeah. think it's over. Yeah. Oh, no, I I mean, three banks is not indicative of what's going on. I mean, if it's happened to three banks, there's like 4,500 regional banks out there. So uh, I thought I heard the number, something like that, in that range this morning. Um, you mean, tell me three out of 4,500, you know, uh, you know, th th those are the only three that are affected. If it affected them, it's affecting, I mean, you know, if you, if you had, if you serve bad chicken in a restaurant and everybody's eating chicken, just, be, you know, one person get, you know, food poisoning, everybody's going to get food poisoning. You know, so <laughs> right. let's hope not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just, uh, Wait, I like chicken. So, um, but I think, you know, I think, I think they're just, I think they're just, uh, I don't know. Once again, you know, it goes back to back two couple of years ago when they said inflation was just transitory and everything is going to be okay. You know, look at the crap that we're in, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I said, Peter yeah. Schiff, he says he's, you know, he, the guy's, He's pretty. If ever, anybody's listened to him, they pull him up. He's he's pretty. Um, he's pretty adamant about you know this banking because there's still more stuff to come, and um, we'll see. But I think it's like you said. I think it's gonna put a ceiling on rates. I mean, bad news is good news for for bonds. So, yeah, that's that's why I say, like I said at the beginning of the show, I think we're done seeing seeing uh, interest rates going up. I, don't, I, I don't felt know. like Powell was more positive and acknowledging the effects that everything has have this time. He has to be. Yeah. He, yeah. he, he, he has to be encouraged. He had to justify sending the signal out, that he's not going to raise rates because banking can't take another hit in the face. Yeah. So, yeah. so he had to be positive today. And I'm, I'm no central bank expert by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, he, he had to be, you know, Hey, it's working. 
<laughs> so well, it's interesting. We'll take a look at it again next week and see what happens. I next week when we do the show, like I say, I'm either going to be right on the border of Nevada and Idaho or pushing my way into Idaho. And uh, we'll be using my Starlink satellite dish to get on the show. So hopefully that'll, that'll work out good. So in the meantime, have a great day. Take on the weekend. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye.